All right, guys, this is my full muscle anatomy guide. So these are the muscles that are most important for bodybuilding and sport in general. I'll have timestamps so you can skip to the section that you care about if you wanna do that, or you can just watch the whole thing and learn about every important muscle in the human body. I hope this clears up any gaps in your knowledge about muscle anatomy. I actually learned a few new things putting this video together, a couple of smaller muscles that I hadn't really thought about as much. So I hope you find out something new and this is helpful for you. And let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the chest. So the function of the chest is to horizontally push and to bring the arms across the front of the body. So movements like bench press, dip, and flies. And for all of these exercises, I always recommend prioritizing the exercises that will allow you to use the most weight. So that generally means big compound movements with a barbell. Like for chest, you would choose bench press over like a cable fly. But I would still recommend doing some kind of fly, like a dumbbell fly or cable fly, along with your big horizontal pushes like bench press and weighted dip. There are two heads to the chest, the sternal head and the clavicular head. And in order to hit the clavicular head, you want to use an incline angle. And then to hit the sternal head, you can use just a flat angle or a decline angle. So doing like incline bench, flat bench, and then either decline bench or a weighted dip. So now for the shoulder or the deltoid muscle. The deltoid has three heads. You've got the front delt, the side delt, and the rear delt. Most people have pretty good front delts already because they do a lot of bench pressing, which targets this muscle as well as the chest. So you don't need to isolate the front delt too much generally, but an overhead press is generally a good idea to get really strong front delts. And you can do front raises, but they're generally not necessary because you already have quite a lot of front delt work if you're doing bench pressing as well. Next is the side delt, which is what's gonna give you like a wide V taper appearance. And the function of this muscle is to bring the arm up to the side like in a lateral raise and another exercise that hits this is the upright rope because your arms are at a similar angle to a lateral raise you're kind of bringing your humerus that upper arm up out to the side and it's going to allow you to use a bit more weight than you could in a lateral raise because your arms aren't fully extended and then often neglected is the rear delt, which is also very important for the shoulder width along with the side delt. And the function of this is basically to bring the arms behind the body when they're out to the side. So like in a reverse fly or a bent over lateral raise or a face pull. And also really good for the rear delts are rows where your arms are at a 45 degree angle relative to your body. So if your elbows are tucked right in close to your side, that's gonna emphasize your lats. If they're all the way out, like 90 degrees away from your body, that's gonna emphasize your traps and your rhomboids. And if they're about 45 degrees, that's gonna hit the rear delts really well. Now the back has lots of muscles. So there are lots of different exercises you have to do to adequately hit all of these muscles. So we'll start with the back muscle that everyone knows about, which is the lats. And this is responsible for horizontal and vertical pulling motions, things like pull-ups, lat pull-downs, and rows. Especially if you tuck your elbows close to your body, that's gonna really emphasize the lats over any other back muscles. Next is the trapezius or the traps. And this muscle has fibers running in different directions. You can see some of them go up, some go across, and some go down. So in order to target those different directions of fibers, you wanna change up the angle of your exercises. So to hit the upper traps, you can do shrugs. And to hit the mid and lower traps, you can do some kind of row with flared elbows. And sitting underneath the traps is the rhomboids. And these can also be hit using flared arm rows, like you can see on screen. And another part of the back that not many people think about is the rotator cuff, which is really important for like shoulder health and stability. So this includes the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. In order to target the supraspinatus, we can do the full can exercise, which is like a front raise, but it's in the scapular plane. So that means your arms are neither straight out in front of you or straight out to the side, like in a lateral raise, but they're about 45 degrees in front of you. And you wanna keep your shoulders depressed and just focus on raising those arms up in that scapular plane and that's gonna hit your supraspinatus muscle. Then to hit the infraspinatus and the teres minor, you can do lying side external rotations and ideally with a towel or something under your arm in between your arm and your body to make the angle like more favorable. And you just rotate at the elbow to bring the weight up. And you're really gonna feel that in this area of your upper back that you've probably not felt much before if you haven't trained the rotator cuff. And then last, the subscapularis. This is responsible for internal rotation of the shoulders. So most people already have too much internal rotation from like sitting all day and doing a lot of bench press. 
so we don't need to train this muscle directly because chances are it's probably pretty strong already maybe even too strong and out of balance with the rest of the rotator cuff muscles and another back muscle that people don't tend to think about much is the spinal erectors so these are the two like pillars of muscle that go up the middle of your back right up alongside your spine and they're going to be very active in good mornings back extensions and deadlifts anything where you're extending the spine and kind of straightening yourself out to stay like upright and the neck is also technically part of the back being attached to the spine. So there are loads of muscles in the neck, but I'm going to focus on the four most important functions of the neck, which are neck flexion controlled by these muscles on the front of the neck, notably the sternocleidomastoid, which is that big one on the side. Neck extension controlled by these muscles on the back of the neck, notably the trapezius, which we talked about a minute ago. Lateral flexion, which is bringing your neck to the side, like tilting your head so that your ear is closer to your shoulder, controlled by these muscles on the side and the back of the neck and then we have rotation controlled by these muscles notably that big one the sternocleidomastoid on the side so in order to grow your neck and make it stronger you want to perform each of these functions of the neck close to failure progressively overload like the reps add a bit of weight over time and you're going to get a really strong neck which is going to protect you from injury especially in contact sports like boxing rugby and a strong neck just looks much more attractive than a skinny little weak neck and now on the front of the upper arm is the biceps brachii and the brachialis. The function of the biceps brachii is to supinate the wrist. So turn your wrist so that your palm is facing upwards and to flex the elbow like in a dumbbell curl or a barbell curl. You can combine these two functions by doing a twisting dumbbell curl or you can do just supinated elbow flexions with like a barbell curl. And I also recommend training this muscle in different angles. So you can do incline curls where most tension is on the bicep at the bottom of the movement. So the, the bottom half of the movement is the hardest part of that exercise. And you can also do spider curls where most tension is on the bicep at the top of the movement. So the top half is the most difficult part of that exercise. And this ensures that you're hitting both the long head and the short head of the bicep. And you also have the brachialis kind of on the side of the biceps. And the best way to target this muscle is by doing reverse grip curls or hammer curls. Now let's talk about the triceps on the back of the arm. So there are three heads of the tricep. You have the lateral head, which is closest to the side of your body. This is the one that gives the kind of horseshoe shape to the tricep. You have the long head, which is closest to the center line of your body, closest to your spine. This is what gives the tricep most of its mass. And then the medial head, which sits underneath and between these two and you can't really see it from the outside, but growing it will push the other two out a little bit and make your arm bigger in general. The function of the tricep is to extend the elbow mostly. So the best overall triceps builders are gonna be the ones that extend the elbow under the heaviest loads. So things like close grip bench press and triceps dips, especially weighted. If you wanna target the lateral head specifically, straight bar triceps push downs. If you wanna target the medial head a bit more, you can do rope push downs. And to target the long head, any exercise that has has your arms overhead or your tricep in a stretched position it's going to be really good for the long head so things like overhead triceps extensions or french press so now for the muscles of the forearm i won't go into specific muscles because there are loads of muscles in the forearm controlling your like your hand wrist rotation all that kind of stuff most important functions of the forearm are wrist extension wrist flexion and rotation of the wrist so supination and pronation you can target the posterior muscles of the forearm so that's the muscles on the top by doing wrist extension exercises and exercises where your wrist is pronated. So wrist extensions, reverse grip curls, hammer curls are all great. And then to target the anterior muscles of the forearm, so the muscles on the bottom of your forearm, you can do wrist curls. And anything that challenges your grip in general, like hanging from a bar, doing deadlifts, farmer's walks, all those exercises will grow your forearms. So next, the abdominal muscles and the six pack that everyone thinks of when you think of abs is the rectus abdominis, which functions to bring the knees up closer like to the chest in things like hanging knee raises and reverse crunches. We also have the transverse abdominis, which kind of helps with intra-abdominal pressure. So like stabilizing and keeping the core tight and braced during things like hollow body holds and planks. Then there's the oblique muscles, which are involved in rotation and kind of side Side bending so things like side planks and Russian twists will really target your obliques then there's the serratus anterior which is responsible for scapular protraction which means
means basically putting your arms as far in front of you as you can and rounding your shoulders forward to protract your scapula. And to train this, you can do scapula push-ups where you're in a push-up position, but instead of bending your elbows, you are just moving your scapula up and down, like in the picture. Now for the quadriceps muscles, as the name suggests, this muscle has four heads. The rectus femoris, which is responsible for hip extension and knee extension, and then the vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermedius, which are all responsible for knee extension. So the best exercises for the quads in general are the ones that can be loaded heavy, like squats and leg press, and then the ones that specifically target knee extension, so leg extensions. So now for the back side of the thigh, these are the hamstring muscles. Uh, this is the right thigh. So on the right side, we have the biceps femoris. In the middle, we have the semitendinosus. And on the left, we have the semimembranosus. And together, these muscles are responsible for hip extension. So like standing up straight out of a deadlift. And they're also responsible for knee flexion. So like a leg curl. Now let's talk about the glutes. So there are three parts of the glute. First, the gluteus maximus, which is the biggest muscle in the body, the glute medius, and the glute minimus. The glute maximus is responsible for hip extension, so things like hip thrusts, Romanian deadlifts, and they work together with the quads in squats and lunges, split squats, and that kind of thing. The glute medius and the glute minimus work together with the tensor fasciae lati to perform hip abduction, which is bringing the thigh away from the center line of the body. And you can target these muscles with the hip abduction machine or anything that involves bringing your thigh like out to the side of your body. And staying on the topic of the hips, we have the hip adductors on the inside of the thigh, which bring the thigh towards the center line of the body in hip adduction. So you can use the adductor machine. Also great is things like Cossack squats. Then we have the psoas and the iliacus, which make up the hip flexors. And their job is to bring the leg up in front of the body. And you can train these with things like leg raises and L-sits and kettlebell swings are great as well. They're a great compound functional movement. Now we have the calves whose function is plantar flexion of the foot which is pointing your toes. There are two important muscles in the calves which are the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The gastrocnemius is the more superficial muscle at the surface of the skin that you actually see and the soleus sits underneath the gastroc and if you build this then it pushes the gastroc out more and makes your calf bigger. So to train the gastrocnemius you want to do straight leg calf press or calf raise variations and to hit the soleus you want to do bent leg or seated calf raises and often ignored but important for knee health, ankle health and sport performance in general is the front of the lower leg. Most important muscle here is the tibialis anterior which is responsible for dorsiflexion of the foot or bringing your toes like up towards your face and you can train this using tibialis raises. You can do them body weight like shown in this picture or you can use a tibialis raise bar and load it with weight and that's a bit more of an advanced version. And there are lots more muscles in the lower leg responsible for like stabilizing and controlling the feet and the ankle but we don't really need to train them directly. They're not that important for bodybuilding. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in the next video.